Okay, hello, testing. Testing. It's uh, Friday, November 6th, around 8 a.m. Yesterday, the workmen installed the uh, rebars and formwork for the uh, basement walls. So you can see the drain rock they delivered yesterday is covering the uh, foundation drain. I called it a French drain. It's because I'm a civil engineer. I don't really work with buildings. But it's the same product. It's a foundation drain. Um, there's a little plank here where you can see the rebars. Let's see if I can zoom in. So you have three horizontal bars. The top bar isn't placed yet and every four feet you have a vertical bar. These are all number five bars, except um, between the uh, window opening and where the beam will rest. <coughs> because I have, uh, the new beams are gonna be located the same place as the old beams, and they're gonna rest here, but I've got openings, windows right next to them. So I have some extra thick rebars. So we'll take a closer look. Uh, this is what the rebars look at. The architect's going to inspect the rebars today and approve of them. The concrete is 25 MPA concrete. The frost depth in Montreal is about six feet. So, um, I decided not to put a liner on the outside of the foundation because it's rather expensive. The foundation is going to be um, waterproof with two coats of bitumen. But given that we're sitting on very firm shale and that there's rebars in the footing and the wall and it's 25 MPA concrete, and I have a lab that's going to come and test it to confirm it. Uh, there's very minimal chance that this foundation will crack. If it doesn't crack, it won't leak. I'll take a closer look. This is the mess in my backyard. This was once a flower bed. Okay, take a look at the house. See that window? In the basement there's going to be a, another window roughly aligned here. And these are the stairs from the outside down to my basement. So there's going to be a door up here, stairs down here, and another door here. There'll be a nice window here. These are the footings for the columns that need to be redone. Uh, these three footings are in the wrong place. They misunderstood the plans. Um, these are the one inch rebar for the footings. The columns, they're designed to support eventually the second floor and part of a snow load in the roof if I decide to put a bearing wall and a second floor. So, take a look at the structure. These are the existing beams that are going to be replaced. Now it looks like you've got four planks, but in fact it's two planks that are 
and the other two are are basically two by threes that are holding up the uh, uh, the French word is salive, but the smaller beams that go from side to side. I don't know what the English term is. Anyway, um, and since this is a continuous beam, the problem with continuous beams is that it's actually built up with a series of overlapping planks, and at the joint, only one of the planks works. So it's fine if the joint is over a column, but if it isn't, then at the joint you've essentially got one plank bearing all the load. So it's not a very efficient thing to do structurally. So this is going to be replaced. Since I'm um, reducing the la porte, sorry, I don't know the English words, but the, the length of the beams between uh, les appuis, what's appui, the, where, where the beams sit, anyway, the, the free length is going to be doubled Plus, instead of supporting a bungalow, it'll potentially support a two-story building with a, some snow load. Um, so I'm uh, replacing these with some 14 by 7 inch parallel beams. And one of the reasons why the beams are so large, if you look at it, they're about spaced 10 feet apart. But the corridor is 4 feet wide, running through the center of my house. And the walls aren't exactly load-bearing walls, but if I need to, they can be reinforced and become load-bearing walls. But this means the load will be off-center relative to the beam, which um, applies a torsional force to the beams. So when you do the calculation and you take into account shear, moment, torsion and everything, plus future potential future loads, you need these huge beams and the load on the column once you calculate live and dead and it's uh, pont de is the French word you know you apply this kind of safety factor you end up with 44,000 pounds that's that's the load on the column the column will also be parallel five and a half by seven inch and they're resting on these um, footings that I'm not too happy with so, there you go. Going to have two bedrooms here, bathroom here, utility room here, laundry room here, kitchen here, and the center where I'm standing, a big living room type area. So that's it. Here a truck coming. <laughs>